Let's get started on today's notes over a review of your integer operations. And today we're going to be focusing on adding and subtracting integers. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is rewrite it. Make sure you create expressions with only one sign in front of each number. Okay, one sign in front of each number. So if you see two signs, perhaps like this or like this, plus a negative or minus a positive, convert that into one sign that's a negative. So in this first example, plus negative four, I want you to combine these two signs and just rewrite it as minus four or negative four. If you see minus a negative, we're gonna convert that to a positive. I've seen some students do this, make it one big plus sign. So if you see that minus a negative, we're just gonna make it one sign and we're gonna make it a positive. So for example, minus negative 3.5, we're gonna change that to positive 3.5 which I know 3.5 is not an integer, it's a decimal, but these are your integer rules, if you will. So again, if you see, if you don't see a positive in front of a number, it's assumed positive. So you can just rewrite it like that. So when we're adding and subtracting integers, I have a little song I like to sing, and it goes like this. Same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. Take the sign of the larger number, then you'll be exact. So that's what we're going to do when we're adding and subtracting decimal, I'm, I'm sorry, when we're adding and subtracting integers, if they're the same sign, we're going to add them and keep the sign. If they're different signs, we'll subtract them, larger number minus the smaller number, take the sign of the larger number. That's our rule. So I'm going to sing it for you again. Same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract, take the sign of the larger number, then you'll be exact. So let's put that into practice on the next examples. So it says simplify the following numerical expressions using the integer rules. So I'll go through these examples. My examples might look slightly different in terms of the font and what have you, but all of the problems are exactly the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. So on this first one, three minus negative four. Now you, most students are really good at, okay, yeah. That's negative one, that is negative one. But if we're following our rules, different signs subtract. Well, this is a positive three and that is a negative four, okay? Well, I'm just, just look at the numbers. Just look at three and four. I'm gonna do four minus three and I get a one. Then it says, take the sign of the larger number. Well, the larger number between three and four is four. The sign in front of that is negative. So my answer is negative one, okay? Now I know in value a positive three is larger than negative four, but for um, these purposes, we're just looking at three and four without the signs to determine which one's larger. On number two, negative four minus two, I have a negative four and I have a negative two. Same signs, add and keep. I'm gonna add them to get six and I keep the sign negative six. Number three, 75 minus 77. That's a positive 75 and a negative 77, so I'm gonna subtract them. Two left over. Take the sign of the larger number. The larger number is 77. The sign in front is negative, therefore my answer is negative. On number four, this is the first example where I have two signs in front of um, the two negative 55 minus negative two. So I'm just gonna rewrite this expression with one sign in front of that two. Negative 55 plus two, and now I'm gonna follow the different signs subtract. Different signs subtract, take the sign of the larger number. So 55 minus two is 53. The larger number is negative, so it's negative 53. On number five, in this case, plus negative three, so 17 plus negative three, I'm gonna rewrite that plus a negative three as 17 minus three, well that's easy, I get 14. All right, let's go to number six. Number six, again, I have two signs in front of this number. 
I'm going to rewrite that plus negative 14 as negative 14 minus 14. And now I've got a negative 14 and a negative 14. Same signs, add and keep. So I get negative 28. Same thing on number 7. I have a negative 65 and a negative 65. Same signs, add and keep. Negative 130. On number eight, what's the first thing you should do? I see minus a negative here. I need to rewrite that as a positive. Negative five plus five, well, that's going to be zero. Different signs, so we're subtracting. Take the sign of the larger number. Well, it's just zero. Five, negative five, and positive five, those are going to cancel each other out. On number nine, two signs in front of that two. Because it's minus a negative, I'm going to change it to a positive, and I get 103. Now remember, if I'm going too fast or too slow, um, you can always go back and re-watch re examples if you're struggling with anything. All right, on number 10, we're still going to follow our integer rules, but this is our first example that involves fractions. So you're going to have to remember your fraction rules. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator. If you don't have a common denominator, you have to create an equivalent fraction to get a common denominator. And then you follow your rules. Adding fractions ain't no thing. You just add the tops and the bottom stays the same. So your denominator will always stay the denominator it is in the problem. Okay? So on number 10, I have a positive 1 half and a negative 3 over 2. Awesome. I already have uh, the same denominator, so now I just need to look at my numerators. Positive 1 and a negative 3. So different signs. I'm going to subtract them. 3 is bigger than 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. Denominator stays the same. That's how I add and subtract fractions. Take the sign of the larger number. Well, the larger number was 3 over 2. The sign in front's negative, so my answer is negative 2 over 2, and I simplify that to be negative 1. All right, let's move on to number 11. Oh, look, I already have notes on there. All right, so right here, number 11. That looks a lot like number 10, except the 1 half is what is negative. 3 over 2 is positive. I'm still going to follow the same rules, because I'm combining numbers with different signs. Negative 1 half plus 3 over 2. So I'm still going to subtract. They have a common denominator already, so I don't need to create any equivalent fractions. 3 minus 1 is 2. Denominator stays the same. Larger number is positive, so it just stays 2 over 2, which is 1. For number 12, first thing I have to do, what do you see? I have 3 fourths plus negative three-fourths. I need to change that plus negative three-fourths to minus. Three-fourths minus three-fourths, well that's pretty easy. Zero. Three-fourths minus three-fourths is zero. On number 13, I've got two signs in front of that five-six. So the first thing I need to do is change this minus a negative to a plus. I also know that I need, to, I need a common denominator when I'm adding and subtracting fractions. What would that common denominator be? It would be 6. So I need to create an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 6. Negative 1 third with a common denominator is the same thing as negative 2 over 6. There's my equivalent fraction. If I multiply that denominator by 2, I multiply that numerator by 2. Minus a negative becomes a positive. And then I don't need to do anything to this next one. So now I have fractions that I'm combining with a common denominator. One's negative, one's positive, so I'm going to use the rule different signs subtract. Take the sign of the larger number, so I subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3. Denominator stays the same. Take the sign of the larger number. Well, 5 over 6 is larger than 2 over 6, so my answer is positive. And then I'm just going to simplify 3 over 6 to 1 half. On number 14, I still don't have a common denominator, so I need to get a common denominator. 5 fourteenths 
minus, oh, 7 goes into 14 two times, so 7 times 2 is 14, which means 9 times 2 is 18. Now I've got two numbers with different signs. Remember, if there's nothing in front, it's assumed positive. So now I'm combining a positive 5 fourteenths with a negative 18 fourteenths. So 18 minus 5, because I just take the larger number minus the smaller number, 18 minus 5 is 13. Denominator stays the same at 14. And the larger number was 18, so it's negative, and I cannot simplify that. All right, this last one, negative 100 plus 1 half, different signs subtract. So I'm going to do 100 minus 1 half, and I just know that to be 99 and 1 half. Take the sign of the larger number, that's negative, so I'm going to leave it as negative 99 and 1 half. All right, your examples or your assignment follows. That is just a review over adding and subtracting integers.